and being part of something that potentially could be watched by millions of people across the world um, and that could create so much unity in a time where we need fellowship more than anything. And it's so cool and it's so beautiful. <laughs> and, it's so <laughs> and it's a little water. So many questions. Uh, I'm so excited to see both your characters on the screen and I would love to hear from each of you, um, starting with you, Morphid, what was the most exciting aspect of taking this role and what was the most intimidating? The most exciting aspect of taking this role was just to get to play a magical creature. I've never played anyone magical, so that's like <laughs> so cool. And I also like knew that there'd be like lots of physicality and um, I was really looking forward to that. The daunting aspect is like I'm I'm like a dreadful fan and critic. Um, I like get so excited when a book I've read is being made into an adaptation and I'm also have really strong ideas about it. So yeah. I know I I know what the fans <laughs> will be feeling about this and I really it was wanting to deliver was daunting. Are you saying yeah there's no expectations at all. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Charlie? Yeah, I think the most daunting thing was knowing how much people people care about this, how how important it is mm. to so many people. And I, I mean, I was a big Tolkien fan before before the show started, but then you know, once you really deep dive into the world mm. and you start to see the amount, the sheer amount of source material there is, and you have you're making your way through it you realize that there are people that have spent lifetimes studying this and you'll never get to the end. Um, and that's how much they care about it. So it's a real responsibility and, and privilege to be able to bring this adaptation to life. And I guess that in itself is super exciting. Yeah. I, just, I guess I've led myself to that part of the answer somehow. <laughs> um, but it, it's such an amazing opportunity to be able to bring an adaptation to life and bring this world to life for people who are already fans and then a new generation of fans as well. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and Morphid, you know, you mentioned uh, there's a lot of physicality. I feel like we get to see like action Galadriel, um, but she's trying to convince the world like, hey, we're still in danger. Things are not all sunshine and rainbows. Um, what can you talk about her conflict as the series progresses? She's in her horror era in terms of no one's listening to her. She knows the badness is coming. She's like, guys, guys listen to me but yeah please. yeah exactly um i think the problem is when you really feel you know something is that you don't notice everything else and so she makes some errors because of that it's good to be one trap minded to some degree but when you're super powerful it can be a little bit dangerous that makes sense um and charlie to wrap up you know we know very little about paul brind he's a human uh, running from a past what else can you tell me the secrets and, and the mystery surround him will pay off as the show progresses. Um, so I don't want to spoil too much. I can say that his relationship with Galadriel in the early episodes and then throughout the season, they uncover things about his past um, and that she actually brings out a lot in him in relation to his past. And that I think she shows him a few versions of himself that he could be um, and it makes him think that well maybe if I embraced my past a bit more things could be a little bit different you know it's a fantasy world there are horses there's fighting um do you have a favorite stunt or like training that you did that was something you hadn't done before I think the horse riding for me <laughs> uh, it was horse amazing riding. And I remember there was one time where I was like practicing I was at horse riding and like a butterfly like landed on my horse's head and I was like how is this real it's magic it's so beautiful <laughs> yeah the horse riding was amazing, and but to be a bit different, I'll say uh, that we did quite a lot of free diving underwater. Yeah. So I'd say I'll say that. No, it is. No, it is. No, we were, it is. we're excited to talk to you. I love this enthusiasm. I'm excited to talk to you. So for both of you, I'd love to hear um, what you thought was the most exciting part about taking this role, and also the most intimidating. And uh, Ismael, I'll start with you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> on the spot. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I've 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 been I've been a huge fan for a long time since I was a teenager, you know, and, and uh, I've always been very very desiring of playing an elf and being an elf in my head. You know, that 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 aspect of it all, um, of seeing that the representation wasn't there, was two things that were combined in um, me wanting to 
pursue opportunities, do uh, make a life and in, in, in a career in, in what I did. And then when this opportunity came about, it just felt like it was just a small opening that I had to dive right in. Uh, I had a, quite the journey with my audition process. I fought for it, was rejected a few times. I kept, not, I never took a no for an answer. And, and I, I wanted to, I had conviction that I was the person to play this role for all those reasons. Uh, he's an outcast, he's a warrior, he's a lover of nature, he's someone who has to make, uh, has had to make his path and I've been extremely exo- uh, excited, slightly daunted, but mostly <laughs> excited uh, to bring all of this onto the screen and create a space where there was none. So um, I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want to sound like cocky but i don't feel i didn't feel that daunted i felt ready time. you prepared yeah it says you've yeah. been you're like this is mine that's awesome um what about you nazanin i mean very similar i mean we bonded <laughs> instantly on set because we have this this common sense of wanting to serve our communities and to fight for equity and equality and um and representation and all of these th- things matter to us and so this role for me is so much bigger than just playing Bronwyn it, it's the the universe being part of this world which in itself is daunting but also super exciting based on the representation alone uh, and being part of something that potentially could be watched by millions of people across the world um, and that could create so much unity in a time where we need fellowship more than anything and it's so cool and it's so beautiful <laughs> and it's, <laughs> and it's a little worse you know, aside from it all, you know, like we're talking about representation, all these things, aside from it all, it's just like you feel like a child. You yeah. feel like it's just magical. It's just it it, it it just has so much in there and really looks good. Yeah. I mean, it's like you, you, you do it to entertain people, to trans, transport people to a different time, different world, to, to make dreams a possibility, uh, all of these things. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so glad you're part of the universe and that we have these two new characters we're joining the story. I think it's amazing. And, you know, we know very little. We know, we know, uh, Aaron Deere is a, is a wood elf and, and we know, uh, Bronwyn is a, is a human healer and there's a forbidden love story, which I love. Um, but what can you tell me about their conflicts in this world as they're dealing with this place that is kind of still, you know, under the shadow of this, this war in the past and potential evil on the horizon? How are they doing? I mean, she, her ancestors, Bronwyn's ancestors, the South, Southlanders, her historically chose evil over good. Um, they are still pay, 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 paying the price for that decision and uh, trying to liberate themselves from the shackles of their past. And so this dynamic here is is the, it, it represents the struggle, the power struggle of someone who is literally occupying these people and and her feeling occupied and and the juxtaposition, the conflict in her mind of loving the occupier, um, but then finding commonality, finding in this 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 being that she's been told is evil because he's occupying, she's finding that there's beauty in this this soul. And I think that is the conflict for her is, I mean, look at him. <laughs> it's not, it, I mean, I, the things that you made it sound very racy and I want to double down that it is PG-13. Family friendly. <laughs> but, but also. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it is it is the also, magnetism. The love is there. I mean, it's the love. It is. It is love. We it is like each other. We like each other a lot, and 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 it comes through the characters. And but when you when you meet them for the first time in the in the story, they're not doing so well in terms of that. You know, yeah. where where we where we will where where you meet them is uh, you know there's a hierarchy uh, difference even within my own community. Um, we're we're both dissenting voices in our in both of our communities, which is something that brings us together. I'm there to uh, to keep these people in line and occupy, and then suddenly I'm could be seen even seen as treasonous so that's where you land and that's where that's where i'm gonna stay i'm not gonna say anything no that's perfect because that's our time anyway so thank you both so much i can't wait to meet your characters in the show thank Thank you you so much